19-year-old Janet Stalkup lived in Garden Grove, California in 1976. She was a nursing student and a part-time employee for the UCI Medical Center. On December 19, Janet was heading in her car to a party. She never arrived at her destination. Janet's family and friends got worried and the police were called. Eight days later, her body was found inside her car, about two and a half miles from her apartment. Janet had been assaulted and strangled. Investigators were able to obtain DNA from an unknown man at a crime scene. DNA technology was not advanced enough to identify the man. Janet was laid to rest at the Forest Lawn Memorial Cemetery. In 2002, investigators were able to create the DNA profile of the attacker. It was submitted in a combined DNA index system, but no matches could be made. In 2020, investigators from the Garden Grove Police Department decided to make use of genetic genealogy to help solve the case. The DNA that was collected from the crime scene was then entered into public DNA databases. It led investigators to Terry Dean Hawkins. He also lived in Garden Grove and worked as a mechanic. He had a criminal history that included drugs, weapons, DUI and indecent exposure. On July 4, 1977, he was arrested for disorderly conduct and taken into custody. The next day, he passed away due to an overdose. This meant that less than a year after he took Janet's life, he was also buried at a Forest Lawn Memorial Cemetery. Investigators were able to find his DNA sample that was taken at his autopsy and it confirmed that he indeed ended Janet's life. It was announced to the public on July 14, 2021. For Janet's sister, Lee, who was 15 years old when Janet was taken, it is a bittersweet moment as their mom passed away and never learned who took her daughter's life. Lee said that no one in the family had ever met Hawkins. Investigators believe it was a random act of violence. 32-year-old Diane Vegas lived in Golden Meadow, Louisiana in 1977. She was married to Chester Vegas Sr. The two of them owned a restaurant called The Chicken House, located less than a mile from their house. Just before 11 p.m. on October 10, 1977, Chester called 911. He told them that he found Diane's body in the restaurant's kitchen. Diane had been fatally shot in the back. Investigators also found that a cash register had been tampered with, giving the crime the appearance of a robbery gone wrong. Chester was taken into custody and questioned, but he was let go again. Investigators had no evidence that he was involved, and there was also no evidence pointing to anyone else, so the case went cold for many years. In October 2020, investigators received new information and led to the case being reopened. Investigators painstakingly reviewed the 44-year-old case file and went back over evidence, details of witness interviews and alibis for those witnesses. A witness who initially provided an alibi for Chester recanted his statement. A second person told detectives that Chester privately admitted that he took Diane's life. In June of 2021, 78-year-old Chester Vegas was arrested in connection to the case. Sheriff Greg Weber said that new information in combination of evidence established during the initial investigation gave detectives the probable cause they needed to make an arrest. He said in a statement, We hope this arrest can begin to bring some closure to the Vegas family who have been living with questions about what happened for nearly 44 years. Essentially, there are relatives of the victim who remained vigilant in keeping up with the case over the years and they led detectives to go back and look at it and reanalyze the evidence. They then realized the case strongly, strongly pointed in one direction and that direction was the husband. Chester Vegas was released on the same night he was arrested after posting the $50,000 bail. Two of Diane's grandchildren spoke out with the one express anger that her grandfather had been released on bond. My sister and I were robbed 
of ever meeting our grandmother and my sister's namesake because of this man and they let him walk. We always knew he was guilty and we may finally get a chance for justice, they give him a bond. It is insulting and disgusting. It was also then revealed that Chester Vegas Jr. had provided his father's alibi. He lied to investigators because he did not want to lose both parents. If convicted, Chester Vegas Sr. faces a sentence of life in prison without parole. 14-year-old Stephanie Ann Isaacson lived in Las Vegas, Nevada in 1989. She attended El Dorado High School. On June 1st, Stephanie left her home just after 6 in the morning and walked to school. Later in the day, her dad became concerned when she did not come back home. He then learned from her friends as she never made it to school, so he called the police. Stephanie's body was soon found in an abandoned lot near Stewart Avenue and Lynn Lane, less than a mile from her high school. The autopsy revealed that she had been assaulted and strangled. Investigators collected DNA from the crime scene that belonged to the man who ended her life. In 1998 and again in 2007, the DNA was tested and submitted to CODIS, but no matches were made. It would only be recently, with the help of genetic genealogy, that progress in the case could be made. In November 2020, a DNA lab offered to use their new technology to help solve the cold case for investigators. The funding to pay for the DNA testing came from an anonymous donor. It would not be easy as there was very little DNA left, the equivalent of 15 cells. Finally, on July 21st, 2021, investigators announced that I got a DNA match and identified a man as Darren Marchant. He had been arrested in 1986 for taking the life of a woman, but the case lacked evidence and was dismissed. Darren took his own life in 1995. Investigators believe it was a random attack and he did not know Stephanie. If she was still alive today, she would be turning 47 on August 12. Stephanie's mom had this to say in a statement, I never believed the case would be solved. It is good to have some closure, but there is no justice for Stephanie at all. We will never have complete closure because nothing will ever bring my daughter back to us.